Where is Blue Origin in the space race? Somewhere, but not in orbit. This is also one of the direct consequences of copying SpaceX. Not only has Blue Origin achieved very few accomplishments, but imitating SpaceX has even hindered the company's development. Let's find out everything in today's episode. You've probably heard about the billionaire space race, right? It's a tale of ambition, money, and cutting-edge technology that's reshaped the U.S. space industry over the past two decades. Three names stand out the most. Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin, Richard Branson with Virgin Group, and Elon Musk with SpaceX. Out of these, Blue Origin and SpaceX are the true rivals. What's fascinating is how they each got started in such different ways. Jeff Bezos, backed by his multi-billion dollar fortune from Amazon, founded Blue Origin in 2000. Meanwhile, Elon Musk jumped into the game in 2002 with SpaceX, armed with just under $200 million from selling PayPal, a sum that frankly was way too small for a startup in the rocket business. In reality, SpaceX came close to bankruptcy multiple times. The first three launches of its Falcon 1 rocket all failed, burning through most of Musk's initial investment. The fourth launch in 2008 was their last chance. Had it failed, the company would have shut down. Fortunately, it succeeded. More than 20 years later, the landscape of the American space industry is unrecognizable. And now is the perfect time to look back. Simply put, today's U.S. space industry can be divided into two parts, SpaceX and everyone else. With Blue Origin as the closest competitor, the two companies share a lot of similarities, especially when you look at their rocket lines, Falcon and New Glenn. Both rockets have partial reusability, land on sea-based platforms, and are capable of carrying significant payloads to low Earth orbit, LEO, and geostationary transfer orbit, GTO. However, New Glenn has a bit of an edge over Falcon 9 in nearly every spec. Starting with size, New Glenn makes a big impression. Standing at 98 meters, it's taller than Falcon 9. Its 7-meter payload fairing is not only larger, but provides a distinct advantage in carrying big satellites. New Glenn's payload capacity is also impressive. It can lift 45,360 kilograms to LEO and 6,800 kilograms to lunar orbit. Compared to Falcon 9's 22,800 kilograms to LEO, that's a significant leap in power, although these numbers are theoretical until New Glenn makes its first flight. When it comes to landing tech, both rockets use engines that can restart mid-flight to control descent, though their landing gear setups differ slightly. New Glenn has six landing legs compared to Falcon 9's four. Interestingly, both companies have sea landing solutions, but due to New Glenn's larger size, Blue Origin invested in a much bigger landing ship, the Jacqueline, which measures 115 by 45 meters. In terms of aerodynamics, New Glenn has a somewhat more traditional design with fins and strakes, metal strips along the rocket body that add stability. In contrast, SpaceX takes a simpler approach with Falcon 9 relying only on grid fins. So, all in all, they're pretty similar, right? Why is that? Blue Origin, founded in 2000, two years before SpaceX, chose a more cautious and gradual approach, moving from suborbital to orbital flights. That's why we have New Shepard. New Shepard, their first rocket, only flies up to 100 kilometers and returns, serving as a stepping stone for Blue Origin to gain experience with reusable rockets. In contrast, Elon Musk's SpaceX went straight for orbital targets from day one. It was bold, but when it succeeded, it gave SpaceX a critical lead over Blue Origin in orbital payload technology. As a result, New Glenn arrived much later than Falcon 9. However, Blue Origin's delay in developing an orbital rocket allowed New Glenn to be designed with the benefit of seeing what already worked on Falcon 9. Not only could Blue Origin replicate certain proven systems, but they could also make New Glenn even more powerful than Falcon 9. While Blue Origin is working on creating a Falcon 9 Plus, SpaceX has made a giant leap forward with Starship. This isn't just a bigger rocket, it's a true revolution. Starship, with full reusability on both stages, can carry up to 100 tons to low Earth orbit. Even more importantly, its projected operating costs are so low they could completely reshape the economics of the space industry. Realizing the widening technological gap, Blue Origin has launched a research program to figure out how to reuse the second stage of New Glenn, aiming for full reusability like Starship. Clearly, Blue Origin is trying to run two races simultaneously, finishing New Glenn to compete with Falcon 9, while also advancing new technologies so they aren't left too far behind by Starship. This situation puts Blue Origin in a tough spot. They're forced to allocate resources toward two parallel development paths, all while still not having completed a single orbital flight. 
There's also a paradox in Blue Origin's approach. Coming in later gives them the advantage of learning from their competitors' successes and failures. However, this learn and follow strategy can become a trap. If you're just copying without any true innovation, you'll never surpass the company you're imitating. You'll always be one step behind. Blue Origin seems caught in a cycle of research and refinement rather than truly pushing forward. And this becomes especially clear when we look at the commercialization approach of both companies. Blue Origin's first product, New Shepard, has flown 28 missions yet only a handful of those flights have been paying customers. Here's the thing. In business, especially in a heavy industry like aerospace, having a solid financial plan is absolutely critical. Take ULA as a prime example with their Vulcan rocket project. Before moving forward with Vulcan, ULA conducted a thorough market analysis. They determined that contracts from the National Security Space Launch NSSL program would justify the development costs. They also had a clear motivation, the need to replace the Atlas V, which uses Russia's RD-180 engine, and the Delta IV Heavy, which costs a whopping $430 million per launch. ULA might not be aiming to go far, but they've calculated a practical approach to achieve the most efficient outcome for the near future. In the real business world, companies have to move fast and efficiently because resources are limited. They need to finish product development before they run out of money. SpaceX is a perfect example of this. They've faced bankruptcy multiple times, but that pressure pushed them to innovate and work faster. Meanwhile, Blue Origin only recently started bidding for military satellite launch contracts with the Pentagon and has secured some private customers for New Glenn. Jeff Bezos is just so rich. With his current investment of $2 billion per year into Blue Origin, he could fund the company for 100 years, even if it never turns a profit. This has led to a lack of urgency and efficiency in their process. Without the pressure of time and financial constraints, their development speed has been way too slow. What about SpaceX? They're hitting milestones that no one thought were possible. As of November 6th, they've completed 400 Falcon launches, an unprecedented achievement in the space industry. Just recently, they even managed to launch Falcon 9 three times in just 20 hours, from both coasts of the U.S., Florida and California completing their 112th, 113th, and 114th successful Falcon launches of the year. There is a positive sign that, it seems, Blue Origin has gone through a process of self-reflection. They finally realize that they can't reach the top of the market just by burning through cash and suing competitors. They've started taking action. Last year, they decided to appoint Dave Limp as CEO. Limp, with more than a decade of experience running Amazon's devices division, is known for his hands-on, results-oriented leadership style. Under his leadership, Blue Origin is now laser-focused on New Glenn, the key project that will put them in the space race. Limp quickly restructured development teams and pushed for a faster execution culture, something Blue Origin had been lacking for years. Unfortunately, SpaceX, with its Falcon rocket fleet launching more than 100 times per year, already holds the majority of space transportation contracts from now through 2030. From a market perspective, for Blue Origin to compete with SpaceX, they need to not only catch up technologically but also prove they can execute missions reliably and cost-effectively. Can Blue Origin stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with SpaceX? Yes but it will take at least two decades of continuous development. This is assuming the company can make significant technological breakthroughs and build a system that can directly compete with Starship. It's not impossible, but it will require a strong investment in resources, technology, and, most importantly, time. After years of anticipation and overcoming numerous obstacles, the ambitious New Glenn project is finally showing significant progress. On October 31st, Blue Origin delivered some exciting news to the tech world by revealing that the first stage of New Glenn, complete with its full cluster of BE-4 engines, has been completed and on its way to Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. In the coming days, we'll witness the highly anticipated hot fire test, a crucial check where all engines will ignite simultaneously for a few seconds. Just over a month ago, Blue Origin also completed a 15-second engine test of New Glenn's second stage. The dual BE-3U engines, fueled by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, each generating 173,000 pounds of thrust, performed stably, and met all expected technical specifications. With these achievements, Blue Origin's ace card is nearly ready, and now what we are eagerly awaiting is New Glenn's maiden flight. New Glenn will become the fourth heavy lift commercial rocket to enter the market, following ULA's Vulcan and SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and Starship. This milestone not only highlights the explosive growth of America's private space industry, but also signals a new era where private companies, not governments, are steering the space race. And it's an absolutely massive step forward for Blue Origin. Well, there's something very interesting that you might not have noticed. 
Recently, Blue Origin has made some intriguing moves after a long period of silence about the new Glenn project. The company has started revealing more details about its pride and joy, primarily focusing on the rocket's first stage. That's right, because Blue Origin's ambitions go far beyond just getting New Glenn, their first orbital rocket, into space. They plan to recover this massive first stage on a specialized barge named Jacqueline on its very first flight. We're calling New Glenn's first booster, so you're telling me there's a chance. Why? No one has landed a reusable booster on the first try. Yet, we're going for it, shared Dave Limp, CEO of Blue Origin, on X. When he said no one, they were positioning themselves as challengers, even to SpaceX, the current king of the launch industry. Well, if I'm not mistaken, every space program in history, whether it's a national program like those of the USA, the Soviet Union, Japan, India, or China, or commercial programs like SpaceX, has encountered at least one catastrophic failure in the process of transitioning from the first successful suborbital vehicle to the first successful orbital vehicle capable of carrying multiple tons of cargo into orbit. Such an aggressive move, isn't it? Now let's take a look at the numbers and configuration of New Glenn's first stage. It's a large and complex machine with four aerodynamic control fins, solid metal fins placed along the rocket's body, and two aerodynamic strakes at the rear of the tanks. They are designed to enhance cross-range capability during descent, giving the booster better maneuverability on its way down. And then there are the BE-4 engines. The first stage is equipped with seven BE-4 engines. Each BE-4 engine is designed for reusability and can generate 550,000 pounds of thrust, about 2,450 kilonewtons, at sea level, with flexible throttling capability. This flexibility is especially critical during landing as the engines must precisely slow the booster for a safe and accurate touchdown. And then there's one of the most crucial parts for any rocket making a return trip the landing gear. New Glenn is equipped with six landing legs, designed to stay tucked neatly within the rocket's body throughout the flight and only deploy right before the booster touches down on the recovery barge out at sea. Once it's completed the job of pushing the second stage and payload into orbit, the first stage will begin its journey back to Earth. This process involves a series of maneuvers to reorient the booster, followed by a landing burn to slow down before executing a vertical landing on the barge. Blue Origin, has set an ambitious goal to reuse each new Glenn first stage up to 25 times, aiming to reduce the cost of access to space. Yeah, it's a pretty strong beast. But is new Glenn really going to outshine SpaceX this time around? Well, it's comparison time. First thing first, SpaceX successfully nailed their booster landing on their very first attempt. Whether Blue Origin can do the same is something that hasn't happened yet. And actually, Blue Origin's vision bears a lot of resemblance to SpaceX's. Both are driven by the ambition to democratize space through reduced launch costs. I'm certain New Glenn and Starship will take on many of the same initial missions, setting the stage for some real competition between these two heavy lifters. But here's the twist. Blue Origin doesn't like to play the trial and error game. They've shown this with the BE-4 engine, which performed flawlessly on its very first flight, and has continued to prove reliable on ULA's Vulcan rocket. Blue Origin's bringing this same mindset to New Glenn, a strategy that could be seen as a mix of arrogance and a big ego. However, this drive for perfection could become a stumbling block. To ensure success on the first try, New Glenn's hardware has been designed with extreme complexity, incorporating layers of redundancies to tackle any situation that might arise. While this sounds promising, it's led to a heavier, more complex system than might be necessary. The biggest distinction between New Glenn and Starship's landing approach lies in the landing gear. Obviously, if you're landing on a flat surface, you need landing legs. Honestly, New Glenn's gear design looks pretty sleek and high-tech. The six-leg setup promises great stability, but questions linger about its practical effectiveness. With a rocket body measuring seven meters in diameter, these legs might not spread wide enough to create a base stable enough for perfect landing, especially on a moving barge in a rolling sea. But one thing is certain, more legs mean more dry mass for the rocket, leading to higher fuel requirements, not only to get the rocket itself into space, but also to support the deceleration and landing process. This inevitably reduces the rocket's payload capacity. It's the rocket equation. It's just physics. And with those six landing legs, profitability may be taking a hit. Six legs might just be pushing the limits of diminishing returns. Those landing legs also need refurbishment after every launch. Blue Origin has to recover the booster, bring it back, inspect and service it before it can fly again. Their goal for New Glenn's turnaround time between flights is currently set at 16 days. SpaceX, on the other hand, knows a lot about landing legs, thanks to years of experience with the Falcon 9. To give you some rough numbers, 
In the Falcon 9's first stage mass of about 25,000 kilograms, the landing leg system alone accounts for around 2,000 kilograms, about 8% of the total weight. Not only that, these parts require thorough inspection and maintenance after every flight, creating a significant operational time and cost burden. To address this with the Starship system, SpaceX decided to ditch the legs, at least for now. Their vision? Catch the booster right on the launch pad, perform a quick inspection with minimal maintenance, then slap on a new Starship, refuel, and fly again, all within just a few hours. They don't have half a month to spare per launch. In today's space industry, timing means everything, and no one understands that better than Elon Musk. SpaceX's approach to rocket development has shown that the fail-fast, learn-fast mindset sometimes trumps aiming for perfection from the start. Don't believe me? New Glenn itself is a bright example of what I'm saying. New Glenn can deliver 45 tons to low Earth orbit, LEO, and 13.6 tons geostationary transfer orbit, GTO, nearly double Falcon 9's capacity. Not only that, its reusability and turnaround time are impressive compared to Falcon 9. But here's the catch. Blue Origin took so long to create a rocket that could launch perfectly from the start that New Glenn is already outdated. By the time they crafted a reusable rocket powerful enough to challenge Falcon 9, SpaceX had already moved far ahead with Starship. We're talking about a launch system that can send over 100 tons to low Earth orbit, and with the upcoming V3 version, this number could surpass 200 tons. This is an unprecedented leap in the space industry, a capability no other rocket in history has achieved. New Glenn now finds itself in a tough spot. It's too big to fit into the medium lift market, but too small to compete with the super heavyweights. It's like it's stuck between SpaceX's two generations of rockets, Falcon 9 and Starship. This highlights the risk of slow development in an industry evolving at breakneck speed. Once Starship becomes fully operational, and I believe that'll be soon, it will truly revolutionize space access. Starship has the potential to replace every launch system on Earth. With full reusability, groundbreaking low launch costs, and unmatched power, Starship will, will redefine how we reach space. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.